This is a Palestinian folk tale, and it is um, it's my favorite actually. Once upon a time, in the land of Palestine, there was a king, and this king has only one son. He always wanted this son to have to get married and have children and to keep the name of the family, etc. etc. So one day the king asked the prince, Can I not use this? I'm a teacher, you can hear me, right? Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. One day uh, the king asked the prince, Why don't you get married? And the prince said, Okay, until I found a suitable girl. And the king said, why don't you go around the kingdoms and find a beautiful princess to marry? And the son said, she doesn't have to be a princess. And the king said, okay, go around the kingdoms and find a beautiful woman to marry. And the prince said, she doesn't have to be beautiful. And the king said, okay, why don't you go around and find a rich woman? So we put her riches over our riches, and we've got really rich. And the prince said, she doesn't, she doesn't have to be rich. The king said, what do you want? He said, I want a girl that reads a lot and knows how to tell stories. And the king said, how can we find that? And the prince said, can I have that? Yeah, he did not say that, I did. <laughs> he said, Easy. We make a big party. We invite all the girls, and the girl that tells me a story that begins and ends with lies will be my future wife. <laughs> and the party began, and all the girls came. The beautiful ones, the ugly ones, the tall ones, the fat ones, the short ones, everyone came, dreaming of marrying the prince. The first girl came inside. She said that she was really beautiful and really rich. All the jewelry, clothes and silk. And she sat in front of the prince and she said, Once upon a time, every man in the hall, except for the prince, he wasn't impressed very much. And he said, every story begins with that. So. So the girls started again and again and again and again, and none of them managed to impress the prince until one girl came from the end of the hall. She wasn't that beautiful. She was like, you know, like us. Normal girl. Um, she was wearing nice clothes, clean. She was wearing a beautiful smile. And she sat in front of the prince and she said, when my grandparents got married, they invited me to their wedding. That's a lie. <laughs> it was a beautiful party. We danced and we ate and we had fun. And my grandparents gave me an egg as a present. And the egg was so big, white, smooth. I started to play with the egg all the way home. But I dropped the egg and it broke. And out of the egg it came a rooster. It wasn't an ordinary rooster, it was a huge, colorful, as big as a horse. And I said, fine, since it is as big as a horse, I will ride on it. So I went all over the place um, on the back of my rooster. I went to islands. I even came to Malaysia. Uh, but one day, I found that the back of my rooster had sore. So I went to the medicine man, and he said, no problem. All you do is bring a date, take the stone out of the date, crush the stone, put the oil on the back of the rooster, and it will be fine. And next morning, I went to check on my rooster. And lo and behold, on the back of my rooster, a palm tree has grown. <laughs> so big, so high, I couldn't see the top of it. So I said, I will discover, I will find out. So I climbed and climbed and climbed until I got to the top. And on the top, there was this huge, beautiful, smooth, brown land. 
This is my land, just to remind you, <laughs> that grew up on my palm tree, that grew up on my rooster. So I was thinking, what shall I plant on my land? Perhaps sesame, sesame seeds. Nice. So in the morning, I put the sesame on the ground. In the afternoon, the harvest was ready. So I put all my sesame in thousands and thousands of sacks. And then I decided to count all my sesame. <laughs> One of them was missing. Look, Your Highness. If you ask, I give. Stealing? No. <laughs> So I looked for sesame, my sesame seed, and an ant was taking my sesame seed and running away. Uh -uh. I followed the ant, I got hold of the sesame seed, and I pulled, and the ant pulled, and I pulled, and the ant pulled, and I pulled, until the sesame seed broke, and a sea of oil came out of it. So now I have two harvests, the sesame and the oil. <laughs> Next morning, I was thinking, what shall I plant on my land? Think. Watermelons. Ha! Huh. So in the morning, I put the seeds. In the afternoon, there were so many water. Big, square, round, pink, green, blue, yellow. But at the end of my field, there was one big, square, blue watermelon. And I was thinking, aha, that could be the most delicious one. So I took my 20 meter sword and I cut the watermelon. And I wanted to try it. But that very moment, I noticed there is a stairwell inside the watermelon. <laughs> so I decided to discover where it's going. So I went down and down and down and down. I found myself in a marketplace. It is a whole city downstairs. People selling, buying, clothes, and shops, and mosques, and churches, everything. So when I was walking the streets discovering, I found an old man sitting on the ground, looking very, very sad. And I said, what's going on? How can I help you? And he said, look. And on the ground was his donkey, putting two legs over two legs, smoking a cigarette. And the man said, I work as a porter. I carry the goods on the back of this donkey. And this donkey has been on a break since the morning. <laughs> and I said, don't worry. I will help you. You get hold of the donkey's head. I get hold of the donkey's tail. And we pull the donkey. We force the donkey to stand up. So he got hold of the head, I got hold of the tail, and we pulled. But the donkey didn't budge. We tried again, but the donkey didn't budge. So I grabbed hold of the tail, and I pulled with all my might. The donkey remained on the ground, and the tail was in my hand. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea where suddenly a demonstration was behind me, and someone grabbed me from the back, and people were shouting, Justice! Justice! I was taken to the dungeons, and the next day, it was my prior. We sat in this big, lofty hall, and the judge was sitting, looking very, very serious. People were shouting, Kill her! Other people were shouting, let her rot in prison. And some genius whispered something in the uh, judge's ears, and the judge smiled. And in that grin, I felt my death. And then the judge said, <coughs> now we will say what will happen to this woman who dared to cut the tail of our beloved donkey. We are going to put this woman in a barrel of a cannon and fire the cannon, and wherever she lands, it's not our problem. And indeed, they did shove me in a barrel of a cannon and they fired. And I flew and flew 
and flew until I landed in your majesty's party. Oh. <laughs>